stuck. <laughs> You just can't help it. Two hours on the motorway. What was it like? <laughs> I'm freezing and I've seized up. <laughs> but it's, that's not the bike spot. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Was it com still comfy for that? Yeah, still comfy. But it's because it's June and it's freezing. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we're still on the Versus. Um, yeah. We did probably about 240 miles yesterday, which isn't a massive amount, is it? But we were six hours in the saddle because we did all back roads. Yeah. Uh, I loved it. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, really love this bike. To yeah. On back of. Yeah, definitely yeah. love it. Because uh, it is um, comfy. Yeah. We did six hours and my bum didn't ache. Um, because um, it's really smooth. Um, it's just comfy. It's just really good for a premium. Yeah. It's fast and can be quite, makes your stomach go up. Can be quite, you know. <laughs> That's some of these, the last thing we did was the Nikon, wasn't it? Mm. And I'd had that for six months. We did that towards the end with the Orpillion Opinion. But you kind of comment on that saying that it was either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you thought. So it was quite a neutral ride, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, this makes your stomach go up a lot more. So what you're trying to say is this is a bit more of an exciting bike. <laughs> yeah, it is. Because yeah. it is, on paper, this is 118 brake horsepower. Uh, there's bikes like the BMW S1000 XR, which are much more powerful. It's about as powerful as my MT10. Mm. And you like going on that day, it's exciting. Yeah. Mm. But of all the bikes you've ridden, and that's been gold, everything from the Nikon, my Grom, uh, MT10, but gold wings and stuff like that, for the ride home, if we could have any of them shipped here, what would you want to go on? Uh, I'd, I do like the gold wing type gold um, wing, yeah. passenger, you know, a pillion experience where you, um, it's like being in an armchair, but I'd just go back on this. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. really good. Really good, comfy, oh, cool. uh, smooth, good fun. Just is, just is really good all rounder. Now you you mentioned about the Nikon uh, mm. that you like the way your feet were quite far forward on yeah. the pegs because um, you find on any bike and with any yeah. trousers you're wearing, you find that the knee armour tends to dig into you a bit. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So what was that like on here? Um, it um, it did dig in because you sit quite upright on this bike. And yeah. You have your um, your legs quite straight underneath you, so you need more bent than it was on the Nikon. Okay. Um, so after six hours, this this knee armour was digging into um, the front of my kneecap. Okay. Um, and it probably wouldn't have done. We weren't on the Nikon for quite so long, but it probably wouldn't have dug in so much because your legs slightly straighter and yeah. out, more out in front. So, um, but that's a small price to pay for um, a comfy ride. Otherwise, the seat's really good on this bike. So I just wanted to show what your leg positions are like on there and your hands and everything. So your knees don't look too bad. How tall are you? 5'3". Uh, and that screen, we've got the standard screen on this. Did you find it buffety at all? No. No, I noticed that. On the Nikon, you were like squatting yeah, down yeah. behind me and it was horrible for me, but you were just absolutely fine. Yeah, it's a massive yeah, seat, really isn't it? Comfy, yeah, I did find I eventually got a bit of an achy. I get an achy bum on anything. And this mm -hmm. is one of those bikes that I get an achy bum a lot later mm. so by the end of the six hours i was moving around a bit but then it's so big i find i can move around quite easily yeah. just reposition myself and actually i was at a guy who customizes seats called motorcycle seat and he was saying that versus thousands a really common job he gets in because people get them reshaped they tend to feel like they're being rolled slightly forward into the tank and i do actually notice that a little bit i feel like i'm going slightly into the tank but having said that i don't not to the point where i feel like i need to get the seat reshaped it just feels really comfortable. Now, at the moment, it's got no luggage on it. And I really like the way the bike looks super clean with the luggage off. It's not got any racks. But we did have the top box on all the time. 
So it's all the Kawasaki luggage in it, and it's got the optional um, back pad on. Yeah. Did you find that put you in a good position? Uh, yeah, at first I thought that I was sitting too upright because of the back okay. pad, but um, then I relaxed into it, oh, and it was fine. Okay. Um, yeah. So it was, it was, I mean, we stopped probably, what, every couple of hours-ish? Yeah. Maybe not even that. But actually what I noticed was I thought we'd have to stop more, and because you can easily get 200 miles out of the tank on this, we only had to fill up once. I mean, the boat was full before I came out. Um, we filled up once, and then there was a point where we needed to get to the hotel, didn't we, for dinner? Uh, and I said, well, we can just keep going, and it's going to be a couple of hours. You're like, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and even managed not to need a wee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, impressive. So this bike yeah. even stops you needing a wee? Yeah, magic powers. <laughs> what about grab rails? Do you, um, um, I mean, obviously, with the top box, you feel less of a need to hold yeah. the grab rails. I didn't always hold them, but uh, just to kind of give my hands something to do, <laughs> I held the ones, I held them. <laughs> okay. Didn't really need to. Big enough? Yeah, comfy. Right position? Yeah, right position. Okay. Uh, getting on and on it? On and off it? Uh, With the panniers on, that must be harder. Yeah. I'm on never on that it. graceful getting on a bike anyway. <laughs> I got on in the end every time I had to. wasn't yeah. a pretty sight, but... Um, Somebody more athletic than me could make it look. But it's not a hard. It's not <laughs> easy. Hard, no, but... it's not hard. Any, any bike's hard when you're as inflexible as I am. <laughs> From my point of view, um, I've been raving about it, haven't I, since since got it, saying how easy it is to ride, but in a way that it's easy but not dull. Mm. So it's not characterless. But um, it is easily easy to ride. But I was slightly because for ages I've been like thinking maybe I shouldn't have ever sold my KTM 1050 Venture. But you have to keep reminding me that I did find it a bit high. Yeah. And that rung true about 10 minutes ago. Cause, yeah, because the sheep Yeah, well, when, when we, no, with the, the van. Oh, yeah. But when we left yesterday, I it was the first time I'd had it fully loaded and had somebody on the back ready to pull away. And I wobbled and just thought, oh, bloody hell, it's really like top heavy. And it just made me think, oh, I really shouldn't have sold the KTM. This is just the same. But then I relaxed into it and I realised that because, so I'm five foot ten, I can get my feet down really easily on this. And I've wound the preload up in preparation for fully loading it. Mm. It's got a remote preload adjuster, which makes it nice and easy. My KTM didn't have that. Uh, but what really rammed it home and just thought, yes, this is right, was that van. So we were going up a hill on blind road that was just wide enough for a van. And a van came herring around the corner, didn't it? Yeah. So we had to brake suddenly and tuck ourselves into the corner, which is all gravelly and horrible. And uh, I just rammed both feet down and then had to kind of edge it forward on the brakes. So we're trying to roll backwards. And with the weight of everything on it, I, was, I know it wasn't fully low because we didn't have the panniers on, but we, we probably only lost about 10 kilos yeah. what we all can. The guy came past, he didn't seem to want to move, did he? But, um, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm think, so glad uh, yeah. I'm on this. But then I didn't realize I'd left it in second. And I've always said with this bike, how brilliant it is. You can just leave it in second and waft around. The engine's so well tuned low down that it just pulls really easily. But I found the limit. And it's trying to go uphill while dragging the front brake fully loaded in second gear, it will stall. Yeah. And it stalled when we'd got, we, we rolled, stalled, I rolled forward, you rolled into the back of me, crushed my nuts, <laughs> and I thought, this is it, it's going down. Uh, but we caught it, and it's because I could get both feet down, and on that slope as well, it's just, oh shit! Okay, and then realised I was in second, got it into first, pulled away. And honestly, if I'd been on the KTM, I think we'd have been over. Yeah, because you definitely have rose tinted specs about the KTM yeah. because it was um, taller, yeah. unwieldy, and um, you just weren't as confident riding it. I was so because I had it for three years and I was really. Yeah, you were. But there was times when it just started to feel a bit yeah, tall. Yeah, I think with that van coming at us and having to skid to a halt. Yeah, it, yeah, I, that I, I couldn't have caught that. A little bit of height difference. Yeah. And not having the balance, being able to put your feet down with the yeah. you would have. Um, yeah, I think we would have been over. It would have been a slow over, but it would have yeah. gone, I think. And what worries me about it, I've, I've seen one of these get dropped. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't drop it. Uh, but it, it is easy done. We've all done it. But what I noticed, where it did go from a lot, it, where it basically went from upright, fully upright, and it was on a ramp, so about 60 feet off the ground, went fully over. 
and actually the guy who was with it, bless him, got thrown over the other side. Um, so it went down with some force and everything was fine on the bike except the bar and the bar bent. And that's what worried me. I was thinking, well, I know the bike falls over well. Yeah. And you could have ridden it with those bent bars. You just have to ride home slightly. Yeah, no with bent bars, but um, yeah. Mm. But so we know it goes over well, but it was, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then, what was it? Cheap. Five minutes later, we went up and it was a really steep right-hand turn, dropping away to the right. And the car stopped suddenly in front of us. We stopped and then I tried to yeah. lean it over to the side to catch it with my left, hand, left foot, but then I had to... Yeah. Get my foot down, and there was a sheep wandering around the road. Yeah, there's Larry the lamb just wandering. <laughs> but that's Exmoor for you, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's true. Um, so what I, well, I think we both found it. We both got off the bike at Highbourne Hotel where we were staying. We both got off and just were like, I don't feel like I've just done six hours. Yeah, definitely. It's not often you go six, seven hours. And that on was the bike. six hours riding. That um, wasn't six hours journey time. That yeah. was six hours riding plus stops. Yeah, you don't often get off a bike after six, seven hours and still like it. Yeah, I do, but I don't get off and feel, and this is the same I found on the launch, that I got off it and was like, okay, I can feel that I, my bum feels a little bit achy, but I just felt refreshed. I didn't feel tired and achy in my shoulders or my arms or anything. I didn't feel uh, mentally drained. But then there were bits coming up here, because, again, you know, typically when you have a, a bike, you tend to have one that's really exciting, but it's, like, it's a bit hard work to, to cruise along with smoothly or it cruises lovely and smoothly but when you want to get a bit of a wiggle on or want to like have a bit of a laugh with it it's it's not kind of got that but it somehow seems to balance it yeah when you were finding we were going pretty quick sometimes and you were finding it was pretty exciting yeah. so, and actually there was a couple of times when we nailed it past some stuff this is why we were on more open roads but as we, we did some overtakes and a of times I thought oh, I don't know this doesn't feel quite right it just feels a bit light I wonder if Helen's moving around on the bike as I as I do the overtake on it, she's kind of flinching. Then as it was just starting to lift the front, right? Now. We, yeah. we, we were being aggressive with the throttle. Yet the throttle has this way of being really, you don't notice any snappiness, do you? You know yeah. on some bikes, as you roll off, you go, ooh. Especially on fuel injected bikes, they go really lean as you shut off. And it's like they, they, they do cut all the fuel. Um, and that's why sometimes a dyno operator will, or an engineer will bring a bit more fuel back in. But this doesn't just kill. It's just lovely and smooth to ride. Uh, which makes it easy for me and nice and comfortable for you. There weren't much helmet banging, was there? <laughs> no, only a couple of times. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and today really, it's just it's what makes me really feel attached to a bike is when you have one that you can just do anything with. And it is like, like here, we just wanted to come and have a look around Exmoor, didn't we? Because we've got yeah. a spare day and it's just, I mean, these are roads, when it goes super tight between the bushes, it wouldn't be much fun on any bike. It's <laughs> no. just a bit nerve-wracking, isn't it? Yeah. You don't know what's around the corner and there's a lot of locals. It's out of holiday season, so they're just mm. thinking, nobody yeah. knows what they're doing around here at this time of year. Uh, so there are some sudden stops. But, I'm, yeah, I'm really enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, it's really, it's a really some fun, might say good it's a, bike. It's a versatile system. <laughs> <laughs> Please in the name. But, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, uh, everything we review, we're looking at from the point of view of is this bike good for the kind of person who would buy it? So people often say, yeah, but would you buy it with your own money? It's like, well, some bikes that I really rate, I wouldn't buy because I think they're a brilliant bike, but I wouldn't buy one. But I, I can try and explain why I think it's good, but this, I would buy one. Yeah, I think if you're a husband and wife touring couple and you want that uh, kind of bike where you can go out, the two of you have fun on it and then yeah. you can take it out on its own and really razz it with your mates, then this is... Yeah. It's compromise, obviously, you know, compared to the MT-10, this is softer. So the suspension isn't hard like the MT-10, although that's not that hard, but it's, it does work. Yeah. Uh, and I like the fact that it is the kind of bike where I'll just think, I'm just going to nip the shop. And especially with all that space under the seat, mm -hmm. I've always got a lock and chain with me. So yeah. if I think I've got to nip to shops to get something, on the MT-10, I've got to think, right, how am I going to carry my lock and chain? How am I going to carry that? For that? And then how am I going to carry the stuff that I, I buy if I'm going shopping or something? Whereas with this, you think, do I need the top box? Do I need full luggage? Just sling it on. If you don't need any of it, you just go and the chain's always in it. It's just yeah. a versatile system. It is. You could say it again, but it is <laughs> a versatile system. She gets fish and chips or pizza. Or just wine. <laughs>
good thing about being a penny. <laughs> <laughs>